Hey guys, it's Megan, and today I'm back with another art hacks video. I did one of these about a year ago, and I finally came up with enough ideas to do another one. You guys know I hate long intros, so let's just get into it. This first hack might seem like common sense, but I honestly didn't think about it until like two weeks ago. Whenever I draw in my sketchbook, I'll usually bring up a reference on my phone or iPad. And something that's been helping me a lot lately is to import the photo into a drawing app and trace the basic shapes over it. I used Autodesk Sketchbook in this example since it's free on the App Store. I just imported my reference, made a new layer, and roughly sketched out the shape of the girl. Obviously, I am not an anatomy expert, but I do know that people usually draw circles on the joints and use lines to connect them. I'm sure I'm not doing it, you know, the right way, but I just do whatever makes sense to me. When you're done drawing the shapes, hide the layer with your reference image and use this to start your drawing. Even though tracing the picture in the app was an extra step, it made drawing it 10 times easier. Once I had the basic shapes down, I made the sketch lighter with a needed eraser and unhid the reference. I lowered the opacity on the shape layer and added more detail to the sketch. And just ignore the mouth, I had some trouble with that and I ended up changing it later. This was actually one of the drawings from my last sketchbook ideas video. And if you're ever stuck for what to draw, definitely check those out. I have like 20 of those videos. Those are always fun to make. The second art hack that I actually used is to use rubber cement instead of masking fluid. Masking fluid is great for professionals who are worried about preserving their artwork for like, you know, a million years, but that stuff is expensive. It costs $15 for a bottle of masking fluid that's the same size as a $2 bottle of rubber cement. And if you're not a watercolor artist, which I am definitely not, this is a great way to experiment without worrying about wasting a more expensive supply. Plus, if you ever decide that watercolors aren't your thing, this can be used just like you'd use regular glue. You can use the brush that comes with it, or you could just use an old paintbrush like I did. Just paint it over any of the areas that you wanna leave white, put on your watercolor, and when it dries, you can peel off the rubber cement. This didn't really like peel off though, I kind of had to rub it off. I actually got this rubber cement eraser, which you definitely don't need. You can just like use your fingers to rub it off. I would recommend investing in some actual watercolor paper though. I always thought, I mean, I just kind of do still suck at watercolors, but I got a lot better once I got some actual watercolor paper. This technique was actually really fun to do, and I'd be interested to see if it worked with other types of paint, like maybe acrylic. This next idea is perfect if you're doing online school this year. To make this, you'll need an old cookie sheet, fabric, a hot glue gun and or a sewing machine, Velcro, and something to stuff the pillow with. I use this leftover memory foam from when I used to make squishies, but you could also use regular polyfill stuffing. This first step is optional, but my cookie sheet was kind of banged up, so I covered it with a coat of spray paint. Since I used memory foam, I cut the pillow to size and measured the pillow to see how big to cut my fabric. If you're using regular pillow stuffing, measure each cookie sheet and add an inch to each side for seam allowance. Cut two pieces of fabric, stick the right sides together, and sew along three of the sides. You could use fabric glue or hot glue if you can't sew, but I generally just sew my projects because it's easy enough. Flip the pillowcase right side out and put in your pillow or your pillow stuffing. I really didn't feel like hand sewing the opening, so I just closed that up with some hot glue. To finish the lap desk, I put some sticky backed Velcro onto the pillow, peeled off the other side, and put the cookie tray on top. Even though the Velcro is sticky, it doesn't really stick to fabric that well, so I reinforced it with some more hot glue. I made sure to put the soft side of the Velcro on the pillow and the rough side on the tray so the pillow could still be used normally if I wanted. What's cool about this lap desk is that it's magnetic. You could use magnets to hold down whatever project you're working on, or you could stick some magnets to the bottom of a cup to hold your supplies. I mostly made this so that I could edit videos from bed without my laptop overheating so much. This next idea is one of my favorites. All you need is a paper clip, masking tape, and a small magnet. Just tape the paper clip to the wall, find something you want to hang, and stick it up with the magnet. This is great because it doesn't put any holes in your paper or your wall. Plus, you won't have to worry about tape ripping anything. This next idea is a creative way to store tubes of paint. I have this paint from Arteza that I really like, but it comes in these plastic trays. I had them stacked up in a drawer, and I just never found myself reaching for them. First, I made some DIY pin boards. I've shown this idea a few times before. 
All you do is hot glue three layers of cardboard together, cover it with fabric, stick some command picture hanging strips on the back, and then you have a DIY corkboard. I hung up the paint using some small binder clips and some push pins. I just stuck a clip on the end of each paint tube and hung them up like this. I have quite a few of these paints, so I ended up making two new pin boards, plus I used the big one that I already had. I love this new setup. I'm definitely an out of sight, out of mind type of person, so it's always nice when I can find ways to display my supplies like this. Let me know down below, do you like keeping your stuff in cabinets or out where you can see it? Now, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you'd know that I love making recycled crafts. I make a lot of things with recycled jars, and I always have trouble getting the labels off. I was scrolling on Pinterest the other day, and I found the perfect solution. Remove as much of your label as you can. Then mix together equal parts baking soda and vegetable oil. Put that on top of the glue, and wait about 10 minutes. Rinse it off with warm water, and you're all set. You're going to have to kind of like rub it off underneath the water, but I was filming this on my phone, and I was just being lazy, so... Um, I'm not doing that in this clip, but that's what you're going to do. This is pretty similar to a product that they sell called Goo Gone, but this way uses ingredients that you probably already have in your pantry. As much as I try to recycle things, somehow I still end up with a bunch of crap that I need to throw away. So I decided to make this plastic bag dispenser to keep in my craft room to hopefully cut down on some of the mess. Take your plastic bags, flatten them out, and fold them all in half like this. Take one of the bags and fold the handles up. Roll the bag about halfway, then place another bag on top. Repeat this process with each bag, rolling it about halfway and placing another one on top. When that's done, you can store the bags in an empty Clorox wipe container. I decorated mine with some contact paper, but that's definitely optional. They're a little more difficult to dispense than, you know, Clorox wipes, but this is a great way to consolidate. This next project is perfect for storing smaller items like beads. To make this, you'll need some toilet paper or paper towel rolls, an empty shoe box, a hot glue gun, and a utility knife or scissors. First, I made my shoe box shorter. I measured one and a half inches from the bottom of the box and cut a line the whole way around. Next, I cut the toilet paper rolls down to size and hot glued them to the bottom of the shoe box. I didn't have enough toilet paper rolls to fill up the whole thing, so I used a few scraps of cardboard to divide the rest of the box. To finish the organizer, I hot glued the lid back onto the box and covered the whole thing with duct tape. You can decorate this with anything that you want or you don't really even have to decorate it. I just always use duct tape on these type of projects for some reason. I don't know why. I used mine to help me organize my jewelry a little bit. I keep most of my jewelry in this drawer and as you can see, it is a hot mess. So I use this to organize some of my bracelets. And you're probably wondering, like, what does this have to do with, you know, art hacks and honestly nothing. But I did make about like half of the bracelets in there and I just wanted to do this, but I didn't have like a video to put it in. I don't know. You could use this to store art supplies, though, obviously, which is why I put it in this video. All right, on to the next one. Another thing you can try is to use a posing app. I found this one called Magic Poser, but they have a bunch of different ones in the app store. In this one, they have six characters to choose from in the free version, and more that you can get with coins. They have a bunch of preset poses, and you can move the character around to create your own. This is great if you want to draw a specific pose, but can't find a reference image to use. There are a few limitations to it, like there aren't a ton of different outfits or hairstyles, or really like body shapes, but for a free app, you know I can't complain. And it's a little bit better than what I usually do, which is if I can't find the pose that I'm looking for, nine times out of 10, I'll just take a really awkward picture of myself. This last idea was something I found on Pinterest. I don't know who came up with it originally, but I thought it was genius. I really like making shrinky dinks, but I've messed up so many of them because I never know how big to make them. That problem can be solved by making a shrinky dink ruler. You literally just take a ruler, mark a piece of shrink plastic, and put it in the oven. I made mine into a keychain so it wouldn't get lost. You could also make swatches of different art supplies on Trinky Dinks to see how the color will change when you shrink them. So that was everything for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know which idea was your favorite. And if you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!